If you hope to be highly self-disciplined and have strong execution ability in the latter half of your life, I suggest you watch this full video, because it will reveal the most cruel and disgusting aspects of self-discipline. 99% of people online talking about self-discipline are lying. The greatest tragedy for those who cannot self-discipline is that they lack self-awareness. For example, when my work is to write a book and my phone is next to me, I write 50 words then pick up my phone and start browsing military news. Before I know it, two hours have passed. I get angry and throw my phone on the bed, thinking how can I be this kind of person. Then I start writing again, but after 10 minutes I subconsciously reach for my phone on the bed and start browsing military news and funny videos again. Another two hours gone. Of the over four hours, I was browsing news and videos for four hours, and wrote my book for 15 minutes. If you can relate, press 1. This was my past self-discipline struggles. But how did I get out of such miserable self-discipline? Firstly, I told myself that if this continues, my life is over, because my work efficiency is too low and I must change. I realized that I am lazy. Let me tell you a truth about self-discipline that many online lie about, I will tell the truth. Self-discipline goes against human nature and is very uncomfortable. For example, while writing my book, I have to constantly control myself and resist the urge to play with my phone. In the beginning, resisting requires effort. Then over time, by frequently engaging in the actions and persisting continuously for four to five months, my body and habits slowly began to accept working for four hours without my phone. The online self-discipline YouTubers and poisonous motivational YouTubers say you can force yourself through willpower to be self-disciplined and resist temptation. It took me four months of this approach before I slowly became able to work without craving my phone as much. I believe many people's self-discipline struggles are similar, it's not an emotional issue or procrastination tendency, but human nature itself is lazy and playful. Human nature is to want to do comfortable, pleasurable things, not work hard. But don't give me excuses about emotions, human nature is fundamentally lazy. Why get up and go to battle when you can stay comfortably in bed? Those so-called motivational YouTubers who scam for money don't tell you this truth. If they attributed lack of self-discipline to your emotions being unhappy, that would oversimplify the issue. If they told you self-discipline requires resisting human nature like I did, gritting your teeth daily to battle those lazy, lying flat tendencies, and after four to five months of struggle you slowly start to feel your body and habits accepting the four hours of work habit, then it reveals how difficult this really is. Why do self-discipline YouTubers deceive you like this? It is typical of success motivation. Motive does not equal sustained drive. They equate your ability to accomplish something with desire and motivation, making self-discipline seem easy. But in reality, self-discipline requires continually resisting human nature to build sustained drive and overcome discomfort. Linking self-discipline to a fleeting motivating desire rather than sustained execution ability is simplifying a complex issue, giving false hopes to the audience, just to scam money. Even if 9 out of 10 people you see are lying, how can I dare to tell the truth? Will telling the truth get me killed? I have run 5 to 10 kilometers daily for over 3,000 kilometers total. It was extremely difficult and tiring, never wanting to run each day. Anyone who tells me self-discipline can be achieved just by resolving emotions, I'll say, come to my home, I'll force you to run 5 to 10 kilometers with me every day until you cry. Let's see you resolve your emotions. You wouldn't be able to run. I tell you, anyone lacking self-discipline that comes to me, I can make them disciplined, only if they allow me to force them. Like in the army, if you can't get up in the morning, I'll rip your blanket off. If you're lazy, I'll smack your butt with a rod until it hurts and you sit up. No emotional crap, no disparagement. We agree that if you're lazy and running with me for a year, I will punish you. I won't evaluate you, just punish so you associates laziness with pain. And I won't push you to run 10 kilometers in one go. After running 500 steps, I'll let you rest, walk 20 to 30 steps, tell you jokes and life philosophies to make the process less painful. What do I want to tell you? The process must be painful. 
the most truthful state is resisting human nature. Because getting up early to run every day will hurt. But I'll add in elements of happiness to lower your pain. Humans can't self-discipline because fundamentally it's an issue of ability, the ability to resist human nature. For example, when I don't want to run, I have to resist my nature and force my legs to move. This forcing is unnatural. A person's daily ability to resist human nature fluctuates. Like after waking up, your ability is stronger, you head to the treadmill. But after working overtime at night, you have a stronger urge to lie flat than run. The stronger your energy and ability to act, the less emotional pain. The less pain, the easier to act. But the discomfort, inner laziness, desire to play never disappears during the process. If it disappeared, then self-discipline would be as easy as those course-selling YouTubers claim, just resolve your emotional pain and uncertainty, then you can do it. Absolutely impossible. Because in teaching over 3,000 students self-discipline and forcing others to train, I understand very clearly what useless trash people are. Many don't want to accept they are in a pretty useless state. Like when I wrote my book, I would write 10 minutes then play on TikTok or games for 2 hours. I first have to accept I am that kind of trash. People like to make external attributions, even for their laziness and uselessness, blaming their emotions being unhappy, others controlling them, etc., like that kid whose aunt punished him for failing to memorize multiplication tables. Her approach was problematic because he clearly felt very emotionally pained. If you have the ability, you should help him with better methods, be a tool to aid not just punish. So how did I become self-disciplined now? One reason is I turned the he and self-discipline into myself. Because I know human emotions are extremely unreliable, always seeking pleasure. With such unstable emotions, you act one day and not the next, then don't act indefinitely. Human nature obstructs growth and becoming exceptional your whole life. So you set rules in your mind, principles like I must run a minimum 5 kilometers and maximum 10 kilometers daily. Though some days I can run 13 kilometers. I'm not saying the process of resisting human nature becomes painless. I try to make it less painful. Like after running this long for over two years, the physical pain has become very bearable. I can't bear the boredom. To address that, I play audiobooks while running, so I feel I'm absorbing new knowledge while running, making the tedium less painful. With the iron law that the stronger your ability, the less painful you feel, my leg strength now is like iron so there is less pain running, but over time there is still soreness and fatigue. Here's a tip I teach everyone self-disciplining long-term like me, have occasional indulgence days. Why? Because sometimes you reach exhaustion, squeezing out every last bit of willpower, then forcing more. Once you reach that state, if you keep forcing self-discipline, you truly can't take it anymore. Choose those days to completely indulge and relax, recharge like a buffer. If you don't understand this trick, you will definitely collapse eventually. For example, of 7 days a week, or 14 days in 2 weeks, I force myself to record videos for you for 4 hours a day. It's miserable, I won't lie. But after that disgusting process, there is some positive feedback, some praise that I record well. Of course I have other work too. So due to long-term resistance against human nature, although it's still tiring, my body has adapted. Motivational articles deceived by portraying a fallacy that the pain of resisting human nature for self-improvement disappears. It absolutely does not. That kid's pain memorizing multiplication tables does not disappear, even if I use methods like association to help him remember more solidly. After reciting twice, he is still in pain. Remember, the pain of self-discipline and battling laziness never disappears. Don't listen to people saying just resolve your emotional pain and you'll succeed if you have grand desires. Think of a simple analogy, if a car has no gas, can it reach the destination? Our mental strength is a combination of spiritual and physical strength, and energy with individual differences. When I first started running, after one kilometer I felt like vomiting because my weight was high then. After running for two to three years, if you tell me to run five kilometers now, 
I won't feel anything because my stamina can support it. I can now work continuously for 4 hours because I built up.